Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something a little bit different with Tennille. If you've been following along her comp simulation like tutorial video, you'll know that we have seen a few issues like such as hip mobility, foot tension, core tension. So while in the tutorial series where she's doing her comp simulation, we're not fixing those things immediately. That's just about trying really hard on on-site attempts and projecting. We have identified those issues and we've been working hard to fix whatever issues we've come across, not only with strength and conditioning, because Tenille's with me three times a week, we generally have one strength and conditioning day and two climbing days. So in the gym, we've been working on core tension, hip mobility, and just general strength and power. And now there's also things that you can do on the wall to fix these kind of issues. So today we're gonna to go through a few of those drills. So anyone that's having these issues, and it's something I see is very common, a lot of my online clients as well, is the hip thing and the foot tension and the core tension. You can follow along and try some of these drills for yourself. So I've got a few drills to take to Neil through today, and then we'll see if we can use that to send one of her projects that we had in the last video. Okay, so we're gonna do a little uh, off the wall foot stab drill. This is a really good warm up drill to get your foot tension and hip mobility going. So you're just going to need a wall that has a variety of holds. Basically, you can either have someone point at the holds for you or you can just choose holds for yourself. And all you're gonna do is stand in front of the wall a little bit back, pick those holds, and you're just gonna lift your foot and then stab really hard on the foot want you to try break the foot so putting all that core tension through and then choose a variety of left to right and front holds and hip positions and then after you stab that hold you're just going to hold it for about two seconds with that maximum tension so it's going to get the hips like really warmed up get the toes warmed up and ready to activate so make sure you are choosing a few high options one two three good one, two, three. One, two, three. It's like... It's going to be awkward. Yep. Get that hip in and around. All the way. Get there. So that's an issue because that for me is real easy. Okay. Okay, so we know that Neil's external rotation is tight because I can move, I can go over here, up here. So let's see the other side. So stand there, let's go back to the right foot. So let's go here with the right foot. One, two, three, here. One, two, three, now try here. One, two, three, okay, right, stay with the right foot, here. <laughs> Toe, once more. And again, so try to like really control from the hip and then point like you on the wall. One, two, three. All right, cool, good, good start. Tenille's now going to climb this pretty specific for hand and foot placement. Um, hold, she's not allowed to adjust her hands or her feet, so the idea is you grab the hold, land the foot, move with confidence. I'm going to pull her off if I see any adjustments of the hand or the feet, because this is just fatigue. We're going to talk about a very unutilized climbing technique which is just going to change your life. <laughs> I see a lot of people using a lot of unnecessary power through a lot of moves um, because you are not yet familiar with how to create momentum from the lower body, from the hips and also from the spare arm, which is something that never uh, people don't use. You will see this a lot on good lead climbers and boulderers. Um, you see like a move which looks like a really far lock off and then I call it the lean back method. And then what you, can, what you see is they actually lean their body all the way back and use momentum for their arm and their hips to propel them forward. 
And usually you would think, oh, leaning back and further away from the wall, that's going to get me further away from the hold. But the momentum it creates with the body is what you need to help propel you and make a really smooth move and take a lot of power out of a move. I am going to use Tenille to demonstrate this technique as well. We'll try it on a few different moves and yeah, hopefully you can understand the difference between a powerful lock off and using momentum. So we're going to use an example of a pretty powerful uh, move here and I'm going to show you how to do it in a hard way, which most people will do automatically and then how to make it a bit easier. So the distance from here to here is quite far. It's natural for people to want to use power. Power, shoulder, lock off. What happens if you want to use momentum? Take the hand off, move your body away, and use that arm swing to propel you up. I could go so far, like I've got so much power. Arm off. I could get all the way over here. I can't lock off all the way to there. Arm off, swing. So, to do I want you to come back. You use momentum from only your lower body. So now I want you to take your arm off and use that to swing and do just do that move. Arm off. Our foot stays on. Oh, okay. Just use it from your arm. Left arm, lean back. Good. All right. So I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like to put power down and then versus use that momentum here. Here's a great example. Good. So I'm going to show you that on the pink, one method of using a lot of upper body power, and then another method of just using the momentum from your body, using that arm swing, leaning back, and just using that to propel you up. So we are going to do a drill about the pace that you climb in. So it's pretty important when you're climbing boulders which are pretty hard for you to not hesitate, to have a really good smooth pace throughout. So what I want you to do, you can either get someone to count for you or you're just going to have to count on your head. So when you're climbing every move, every hand move has to be done before you hit three. So climbing, one, two, three. So this will just help you climb really efficiently, smoothly, don't be frantic. Three seconds is enough time to do a really nice controlled move and you will get to the end and you will be much less pumped if you had hung back and taken a really long time. So I see a lot of issues with people's pacing, looking around at feet, looking around at hands, not going with their gut instinct with the first movement, which is like a huge issue. Usually your gut tells you the correct movement for you on your first thought. So just practice this drill on a few boulders and try to apply that whenever you're on siding or climbing really hard boulders for you. So here's what it looks like. Two, three, one, two, three, one. 
side foot stabs. So for this you're just going to need a reasonably overhanging root, two handholds and pick two feet which are to the right and left of you and quite far away. Uh, so what you're going to be doing is just hanging from the feet, creating momentum, stabbing the foot to the left, holding, one, two, three, releasing, stabbing the foot right, holding, one, two, three. So you want to make sure that the hands are reasonably good, but don't make the feet too good because the whole deal is we're training what happens when we need to swing our feet and get it onto a foot which is either side of us and being able to hold that toe really firm down without the feet cutting. So this is a core tension drill and foot tension drill. And here's what it looks like. We're going to go get that pink. short there because wow an hour just goes really fast when you're doing drills and I had my next client okay so for Tanil to jump on that comp boulder that she could not for the life of her um, get the right tension on her foot to do that move on Saturday it was super impressive 
that she was able to not only stick the move, but then continue on and flash the rest of the boulder and not be influenced by the other beta that she has seen because no one else has been able to like push out of the back step like that, put the foot even higher. And then for the last move, put the left foot already on the really high foot so that you don't have to powerfully go to the a really bad last hold and then you can just stand there so that was actually super impressive to pick up what was right for her size and find the best possible solution and take it to the end as a coach that's really good to see using you know what's going to be advantageous for yourself that is really not easy if you are short and not only I don't like making short excuses but Tennille has a negative ape index of 13 centimeters um, I'm a negative six and I find it pretty rough. Like I have been able to not establish in a competition once because it was a tip to tip, like hand tip to tip um, start. And my uh, not many people are that negative. So I just couldn't start. So being ne at negative 13, I don't think she gives herself enough credit. Like she was super disappointed that she didn't do this boulder early. Um, but yeah, this one is way easier if you are if you are taller and have a long span there is definitely uh, boulders which can be easier if you're shorter we just know you know we all know they're a little bit subjective but if you have a if you have a negative ape of 13 guess what you have to be so much more powerful um feet are further away holds are further away you have to be way stronger so yeah super proud of Sunil for that so i hope you guys enjoyed like having we ran out of time but so you've seen a really good warm-up foot stab um drill that you can do off the wall you've seen a side foot stab which is a really good one and a, a little core burner the glued hand and feet is super important for most people to try that and do that as you're warming up but also do it at about your flash grade uh, one two three so the three second drill we went too hard on to Neil uh, that boulder was she didn't flash it and it took her quite a lot of projecting to do that so to do that um, is pretty stressful but you know I like to throw people in the deep end so uh, ideally do that just below your flash grade and get that pacing right and then be able to progress through that so as soon as you've now down that moving at that speed you can try it on your flash grade but just make it a boulder that you're quite familiar with get into a really nice flow eventually and hey you'll feel the difference when you come down and you've you've not hung about and wasted any energy and then try the different variations of the arm swing momentum uh, technique taking one hand off and then using that momentum through the foot the hip and the arm to generate power towards the hold so use that in areas where a hold seems really far away and you think you're gonna have to lock it off go for the layback arm swing obviously it doesn't work everywhere but i encourage you to try it um, thanks for watching do comment like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one